So Mustard Seed is really thrilled being here for this launching of Be the Ripple. Um, we have a, an amazing partnership with uh, the church here. And um, I don't know how many years ago Lisa came out and did an internship with Mustard Seed. And we've been sharing ever since. So our, our partnership is really a unity in taking the gospel out to the very poor, isolated, perhaps forgotten regions of Indonesia. So, sorry. Um, so our, our history, we started um, over 75 years ago. <clears throat> it was started by one woman. She was a, a missionary's wife. And she started looking after babies that were left on her doorstep. Well, today, Mustard Seed still serves children in children's homes, but also embraces all kinds of schools, uh, nursery schools, kindergartens, uh, right up to grade 12, after school programs, uh, schools that specialize in agriculture and trade schools, and more recently, in teacher training schools. <coughs> Our, um, our Indonesian uh, director, our international director, I should say, Paul Richardson, was born in Papua, and he has a real heart for raising up leaders for every facet of Indonesian life. So for in education, in business, in uh, sports even, and, um, and politics, and of course, in the church. So I would like to, uh, to focus on the uh, program called Transformation. It's a program that's uh, about six years old now, and it's our hope that over the next couple of years, we will have a core class of 40 students, and each year, 10 will be launched out into ministry, and another 10 new students will come in. So to share uh, in this uh, Transformation program, um, I'd like to introduce you to Hannah. Here's Hannah. Even though Hannah and I were born on opposite sides of the world, we really have a lot in common. We were both uh, born into very loving families on the outskirts of a village. And we both have three sisters, and we know sister power. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Our fathers were farmers and worked hard to support for the living for their family. Um, but they were teased and even laughed at for not having sons. Apparently it's important for farmers to have sons. And it's also a cultural importance around boys. But our fathers never, never talked to us about that. They, they very much loved their little girls. Well, uh, Hannah and my mother were both sort of the business people, the business sense of the family. Uh, my mother sold apples and pears from the orchard, and Hannah's mother uh, sold gasoline and cooking oil. <coughs> so neither Hannah and I had a school very close to where we lived. I walked two miles to a one-room school, and here's where the difference is, though. Hannah walked two hours all the way, hoping that the teacher would be there. And often the teacher wasn't there. And I had a hard time getting my head around that and had to look for some statistics. But sure enough, it showed that at any given day in a rural uh, Papua, that over 43% of the teachers would be absent. But well, one day Hannah showed up at school and there was a nice little leaflet uh, on, her, on her desk. And the teacher said, write everything that I've put on the board into this leaflet. Well, Hannah didn't know that she was about to graduate from grade six. Now, the next step for her and her family was to find a junior high school that was affordable. And that's what brought Hannah to the Mustard Seed School in Wamina. She came with the language of her village and their beliefs and a little bit of Bahasa. 
And she told me that it wasn't really until she graduated into high school that all of the uh, worship and Bible study time really started to come on her heart. And it was in a worship service where the pastor was talking about being children of God that she just got up and came forward and, and said, yes, I embrace, I believe, I accept. I am a child of God. And she stayed that course. She's never turned away from it. <clears throat> so later on in high school, she knew about this transformation program. And when they came to... Uh, to interview candidates, uh, she was pretty excited and she really prepared and she told them what was on her heart that she had always wanted to be a teacher. She wanted to be a math teacher because math was so important, but all her math teachers were so boring. So she really wanted to be a good math teacher and a, a teacher with good character and strong character. So she was accepted into the program and she moved to Malang she lived in a dormitory with many other girls from very remote villages, but from many different islands across Indonesia. And she had an extensive uh, four-month training with the, her, the nine new classmates uh, in discipleship and in leadership. And when it came time for her to uh, apply for university, she couldn't pass the math exam. She was just devastated. And yet that child of God just rose up in her and she uh, studied with a tutor for six weeks and then she did pass that exam. <clears throat> so when, when um, Hannah does graduate in another couple of years, I should say that how well she's doing now in her second year, when she does graduate she won't be alone because there has already been one graduating class in 2014. And three of these young people um, are now working in the, in the Wamina area. This is their commissioning, and the first girl is Ruth. Uh, Ruth has been working in an elementary school in Bocondini. Um, and next year, she will come in and work at the junior high in, uh, in Wamina. And Yanio, Yanio teaches history and Bible, and he spends most of his evenings and weekends with his students out in the hill, on the hillside, uh, preaching and sharing the gospel with them, and just getting to know them and their families. We've been hearing of baptisms that have, have resulted from his time uh, just out after school, just being uh, with a group and, um, and studying with them. And Rudy teaches uh, computer and geography. And uh, he's also a leader in the Boy Scouts uh, in Wamina. So when um, Hannah does graduate, she will go out to, to Wamina as well. Um, and she will be greeted by Jonas, Priscilla, and Nippy, who will ar have arrived just the year before them. And then she'll be there in time to welcome Yarman and Yatinas. We're actually pretty proud of these young people. <coughs> Hannah will also have her classmates, the group that she started with, and they'll, uh, they'll be able to, uh, to support each other in ways that nobody else can. So just think about the hundreds of children who will learn how very special they are to Jesus and that they can have a personal relationship with him, just like Hannah and you and me. It starts with one person but reaches many in the ripple that flows from their life. So that's what Mustard Seed is really all about. It's a dream turned into a passion to raise up Christian missionary leaders to be people of influence for Christ throughout Indonesia. Please pray for Hannah and for her class that they would truly bless others 
for Christ's sake. Amen.